Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Sustainability, it's one of the largest problems we face. And when I look at climate change, I really just see a data and a change management problem. I've had the opportunity to speak with so many forward-thinking leaders who are tackling the climate change problem in so many different innovative ways. But today I wanted to double click really just on one very compelling approach. It's something that we've been working together on. I believe it has really the potential to change the world. And to do that, I've invited Jason Grant, who as you'll shortly see, super passionate about the topic. He's had deep experience in building software platforms, which I think is gonna be super important. He's the chief operating officer for Climate Vault. And quite coincidentally, he's a neighbor here in Seattle. And so with that, welcome. Hi, Sanjay. Thanks for having me today. Thanks for being here, Jason. Listen, I wanted to start right away with, tell me about the problem you're looking to solve. Well, we are very, very squarely focused on carbon. So there are a lot of aspects to sustainability. There's a lot of people doing a lot of good work in different ways, but we are focused on carbon. Carbon gets into the atmosphere. It stays there for a really long time and it heats everything up. And that has all the downstream impacts that we're experiencing now, be it the fires and the smoke in our neighborhood that you mentioned uh, yesterday, actually, to the flooding on the East Coast, to uh, all the events that we're seeing that are really having an impact on people's lives. And Jason, one of the things I've loved about the work that your firm and your operation is doing is that it's taken a very unique and a very innovative approach. Tell us a little bit about how you're helping solve for the problem in the long run. Sure. So Climate Vault has come up with the world's first reduction and removal mechanism, an all-in-one mechanism. So we've seen a lot of increased interest in people, organizations, and individuals really wanting to have an impact on climate. They're wanting to get ahead of governments doing things, but it's a little bit slower than we'd probably all like. Individuals are stepping up. And with that surge of demand, they're looking around the room and they're saying, what can we do and whatnot? And there's a lot of options out there, and not all of them are good well-intentioned, but don't always have the impact that we want to have. Our approach basically uses something called the cap and trade markets, something that's verifiable. It's very transparent. A ton is a metric ton. Um, it's not gonna burn. Uh, and it allows people to achieve an immediate reduction for their carbon footprint and achieve carbon neutrality. We then- so, so hold on before you go to the other half, just on this first half, you know, we're all familiar with um, carbon offsets. Um, you introduced a new term, allowances market. Tell us a little bit more about it. Is that different from the other markets that are out there? What's going on over here? Sure. So the it, different regions have set up basically carbon uh, allowances that people are allowed to emit, basically primary polluters. So if I'm a power plant in the northeastern portion of the United States, I have to report to the local uh, regime called the REGI regime, Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, and I have to tell them how much carbon I actually emitted. And then for all that carbon I've emitted, I actually have to purchase an allowance. What this is trying to do is it's trying to put a price on carbon. And over time, the number of allowances that are allowed are actually reducing, which end up, ends up creating an economic incentive for those polluters to actually invest in technology and solutions so that their pollution goes down. So this is interesting because I think we've all been pretty used to the normal voluntary markets, if you will. Uh, and there's always been all of the challenges around uh, 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 just transparency. There's been the challenge around, is it verifiable? Uh, and we've been seeing a lot of interest and a lot of challenges there. Um, really, I think what you're doing is you're coming at it a little differently, which is you're going after the allowances market. And I suspect, you know, a lot of that is because it's regulated, it's auditable, it's managed at a government or a semi-government level. Is that is that sort of the reason why you've sort of gone after the the compliance markets give a lot of advantages. Like, as you said, it's regulated by a government, government authority. There's very strict tracking. It doesn't have the additionality problems that we see in the voluntary market. So a lot of people are very interested in using the voluntary offsets, which, which work on trees. And we love trees, but a lot of the premises are that I am going to keep these trees here and I wasn't going to cut them down. And it's not entirely, you, you can't always be sure that that was really the case. And then the other aspect that we look at it is, if you have a forest that's pre-existing, uh, are you additionally removing carbon from the atmosphere? If that forest was just going to stay there the whole time, your impact, although you've paid some money, has not actually resulted in some additional reduction 
or removal from the atmosphere. And we think that's problematic. We think that if people are stepping up and trying to take action, that they should be assured that their action is actually going to have a, a verifiable impact. So this is amazing, right? Because what you're really saying is just even for the reduction part, we have a more verifiable, we have a well-managed, well-regulated um, sort of a mechanism that is far superior to sort of traditional ways of doing offset. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly it. Awesome. But the story doesn't really stop there, does it? It doesn't. So in all plans you look at that helps the, the world mitigate the most dramatic effects of climate change, everywhere in there you'll see CDR, carbon dioxide removal. Carbon dioxide removal is, is needed to actually mitigate these effects. What we're doing is we want to help carbon dioxide removal technologies grow and take scale, basically. So we'll basically take the allowances and we'll use them to fund nascent carbon dioxide removal organizations so that they can actually achieve scale and reduce the overall cost, cost to remove carbon from the atmosphere. It's a growing, it's nascent market right now. It's growing. We're hoping to send a price signal and say, hey, if you're an innovator, you have an idea of how you can actually remove carbon dioxide from the environment. And we can verify that the additionality is there. It really is removed from the, the atmosphere that would not have otherwise been removed. We will actually provide them a grant to fund that technology and help them grow. So that's awesome, right? Because I think, and I think Jason, you said this in terms of a signal, but what you're really doing is eventually this will fund the actual removal of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. But really just even to get that whole ecosystem going, you need to be able to signal that there's a revenue model and there's a price associated with it. And by you doing what you're trying to do is really going to get that signal out. So we hope to see a lot more innovation because there's revenue on the back end of it. And as those carbon reduction technologies come out, then you'll actually put them into play. That, that's exactly right. If I am an innovator right now and I am working on my carbon dioxide removal machine in my garage, I get it working, I remove some carbon from the atmosphere, I head down to Sand Hill Road and said, good news, I have a machine that'll remove carbon dioxide removal from uh, carbon dioxide from the air. The investors look at you and say, that's wonderful, we're very excited about that, we're all very concerned, how are you gonna make money? And that's, that's the problem we're dealing with right now is there is not a signal to the market that says, there is a way for you to grow and have a profitable organization so that people are getting involved, putting their best talent forward to actually grow those technologies. So Jason, this is amazing because, and I just wanna kind of grok this right, what you're really saying is, first off, we have a better, more verifiable, more authentic offset program using the allowances market. So it allows you to sort of get into action right now with carbon reduction. But then alongside that, in the second step of that journey, we're actually working with innovators to bring technologies out and then actually reduce in the carbon dioxide from the environment. So it's a one-two punch altogether. Is that right? That's exactly right. People can achieve carbon neutrality now and know that their investments are moving forward to actually funding carbon dioxide removal. That is just such an amazing um, idea. Jason, it's just such an exciting conversation with you. Tell us a little bit about Climate Vault, the organization you're with. Sure. So Climate Vault is an organization that was founded out of the University of Chicago. Basically, one of the economics professors there, Michael Greensoad, has had this idea for 10 years. He's been walking around, looking at these voluntary markets, thinking about the problems there, and he's been wondering why somebody hasn't started to use these compliance markets. So he eventually said, okay, I've got to do this. He formed the organization. We've been around for just a little over two years now. We have 750,000 metric tons in the vault. Those are reductions that have already happened and whatnot. And we have a growing customer base that's really excited to work with us. That's fantastic. Well, I was going to say one of the reasons um, he and they haven't done as much with it is because they didn't have a software platform <laughs> engineer, someone who could kind of build this out. But um, jokes aside, um, Jason, really industrializing this idea is a big uh, uh, opportunity and, and it's got enough challenges. I want to shift the discussion a little bit to talking about technology and your role and what you're doing and how actually you and I and our companies are working together to really make that happen. So tell us about sort of the tech part of it. How do you how do you make this happen? Yeah, so we're, we're really excited about this. So Climate Vault is now moving towards having more and more technology so that organizations that want to offer products and services that are carbon neutral, they can do that. They need a technology back base to actually tie into so they can understand the pricing, the transparency, the verifiability of the, what they're doing. And we're starting to build that together. I'm very excited actually about our partnership because 
we started it, but we're going to spring forward now. It's going to allow us to achieve scale. It's going to allow us to get into the market quickly on that side. And ultimately, it's going to have a bigger impact. We're going to be able to take more tons out of the atmosphere over time. This is uh, such exciting work. I don't know if we're more excited than you are, but I, I know we share that. <laughs> not, I'm not sure you're more excited than we are, but... <laughs> I think, I think just the idea of a dynamic platform that can scale and bring through automated access and APIs, the ability for us to link into corporations and businesses, into e-commerce and shopping sites, such that everyone can get an easy access into a platform, get transparency on the pricing, be able to actually take a positive step that is verifiable, that is uh, regulated around carbon reduction, and then know that as technologies emerge and will help those technologies emerge, have a role to play in actually reducing and taking it, uh, removing and taking carbon out of the atmosphere. Just a fantastic platform. And in reality, uh, it's a great idea, but for it to be real, it needs the platform. And that's really the work you're leading. And we're so happy to be part of that. Very we're exciting. very, very appreciative as well for the what Genpak brings to the table. Your talent, your knowledge, you want, you're really accelerating to get there much quicker than we would have been able to by far. Well, thank you for being here. I know you've got, you're doing such important work. We wish you all the best. Um, we have a number of people on LinkedIn who will undoubtedly want to connect with you. And if so I hope you'll be receptive to that. You're at www.climatevault.com. Is that correct? Climatevault.org. That's right. Sorry, .org. Yeah. And so we encourage everyone to sort of lean in into that. And uh, thank you for joining us, Jason. Really good to have you here. Thanks so much. It was great talking with you.